Marilyn to Film Freak, do-it-yourself crisis, Ramses has cobbled together an ancient Egyptian perpetual motion machine. Now he wants to be celebrated as mankind's greatest genius. He already invited media to a press conference and he's already trying on mortar boards. He's going to blow our cover. We have to convince him that he'll be making a big fool of himself and endanger our paradise. Film Freak, please help. And action! Ah, Marilyn! And Film Freak! So, has the news of my triumph and fame reached you all yet? Do you want to see the eighth wonder of the world? Yes, we heard the news. And we wanted to talk a little shop about this so-called wonder device, expert to expert. Now it will make me, Ramses, the legendary guardian of ancient Egyptian wisdom, immortal. Immortal? Sorry, but you're about 3,000 years too late, you dusty fossil. Now then, Film Freak, a perpetual motion machine has a lot to do with a certain variable, the, uh, efficiency factor. Could you give us some more info about that along with a practical example, please? Efficiency indicates what portion of expended energy is converted into usable energy. Efficiency specifies the ratio of usable energy to expended energy. Because usable energy is always less than expended energy, efficiency is always less than 1. An incandescent light bulb has an efficiency of 0 0.05. What does that mean? That's still not quite right. Two out of four answers are correct. Exactly. Only 5% of the expended energy can be used. If we assume 100 watts of available energy, then only 5 watts are used as light. Click on Continue. Ha! 5%! That's laughable high technology! What I have built is a mystery machine that will change the world! Can you eat it? That thing really does look mysterious. But do you know the law of conservation of energy? We wouldn't want to keep it from uh, your most royal superior one. Film Freak, please. What does the law of conservation of energy state? Very good. You understand the law of conservation of energy. Click on Continue. Please! My machine never loses energy! Everything is conserved! Ha <laughs> ha! I'll be famous! Famous as the biggest ancient Egyptian chump! You can't even open an elevator door by yourself! Let's stick with this perpetual motion machine. What exactly is that? Film Freak, surely you can tell us something about it. Do you know what a perpetual motion machine is? Correct. Those are the characteristics of a perpetual motion machine. Click Continue to learn more about it. Now you all recognize the epic importance of my work. I only recognize a big pile of junk. If you had built a perpetual motion machine, that would be a groundbreaking success. Film Freak, others have tried it already. Leonardo da Vinci, for example. The name perpetual motion machine comes from the Latin perpetuum mobili, which literally means perpetual motion. A perpetual motion machine should not only stay in motion forever, but ideally perform useful work. The only requirement is a one-time initial input of energy. The perpetual motion machine shown here was developed by Leonardo da Vinci. Do you think it works?
That's correct. No matter how well thought out the idea, a perpetual motion machine cannot exist. Click on Continue. Why, this is an outrage! The proof's right here! The proof of your immortal idiocy! Film Freak, why is it impossible to build a perpetual motion machine? Why is it impossible to build a perpetual motion machine? Right. A perpetual motion machine violates the laws of physics and is therefore impossible. Click on Continue. That's nonsense! They were all amateurs before me! I, Ramses, King and God! I'll prove to all of you soon enough that my perpetual motion machine moves as if by a ghost's hand! Oh well, let's take a look at the amateurs. Film Freak, one final detail. Study the history of the perpetual motion machine. Click on each period on the timeline. The first design for a perpetual motion machine dates from 1150 AD in India. Elongated containers filled with mercury are attached to a wheel. The wheel's center of gravity changes according to the position of the mercury. This was supposed to perpetually turn the wheel clockwise. It didn't. The idea of a perpetual motion machine entered European culture from India. In 1230, the French master builder Viada Encourt described a perpetual motion machine that consisted of a wheel with hammers hanging from it. In his description, Encourt mentioned mercury as a filling material, so it is assumed that he knew of the Indian concept of a perpetual motion machine either directly or indirectly. Even the universal genius Leonardo da Vinci, he lived from 1452 to 1519, in the 15th century drew up a design for a perpetual motion machine, but never built it. He came to the conclusion that a perpetual motion machine is impossible. In 1715 and 1717, Johann Ernst Elias Bessler built two large machines that seemed to be perpetual motion machines. These turned constantly and were also able to lift heavy loads with a tackle line. Even the mathematician and philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who established the principle that a perpetual motion machine is impossible, praised these wonder wheels. They proved to be a hoax, though. They were turned by hand from the next room. In 1775, the French Academy of Sciences declared that it would no longer accept or examine any works dealing with perpetual motion machines because perpetual motion is impossible. When Julius Robert von Meyer and Rudolf Clausius formulated the law of conservation of energy in the middle of the 19th century, the theoretical foundation for a perpetual motion machine ended. But the idea of a perpetual motion machine isn't dead. Inventors keep trying to come up with a perpetually moving machine. Maryland to Film Freak, situation defused. Venus noticed that something was fishy. She discovered Hugo behind the shed where he was turning the crank of Ramses's perpetual motion machine. The Egyptian king is hopping mad that his scam was uncovered. Venus is laughing her head off. Oh no, and Hugo is so embarrassed that he's transformed into Klaus. Now we have to put up with that mischievous Klaus again. Cut, cut, cut.